Yo, it is good YouTube, and welcome back to another JC2K video. In today's video, we are going to be ranking every single non-gambling opal currently available here in NBA 2K24, my team, or I guess that has been available, because a couple of these might not be available anymore, a couple of the Rush players. Uh, we're ranking them all on the tier list right here. Uh, I decided to break up the opals tier list into the gambling only opals and the non-gambling opals because I think that's kind of a better way to do this. Uh, so we'll be getting gambling opals today and non-gambling opals tomorrow. This video is being recorded the day before Easter, but it's dropping on Easter. So for those of y'all out there who do celebrate Easter, happy Easter. He is risen. Um, and yeah, I appreciate y'all for supporting my channel, man. I hope you have a great day and I would really appreciate it. By the way, we're pushing towards 25,000 subscriber mark on the channel. would really appreciate it if y'all do subscribe but yeah without further ado let's hop right into it we got 22 opals that have been available from non-gambling all available this season in different forms and honestly some really good cards in here for sure it's just with the gambling only content and how stupid that has been and has kind of taken the shine away from a lot of this stuff which otherwise i think would be pretty well received so i don't know um uh, alan houston for example i really like this card I think he dribbles the ball at a high level. I think he is um, a very, very capable slasher. I think he's an elite level shot creator. And honestly, I love his release. I like his fade. And he's super solid defensively as well. He's a pretty versatile 6'6 shooting guard who does a lot of things really well on both ends of the court. And definitely A tier for me very easily. Uh, I think Shingun goes S tier. I really do. Um, he's like 6'11 at power forward with pretty close to... Not perfect sigs, but very good sigs. Um, and, and release isn't perfect, but I would say it's still usable. And he's got super complete stats and badges. Uh, one of the most complete power forwards in the game, period, non-gambling or not. And I think he's S tier as well. Honestly, Wiggins is right on that borderline for the S tier as well to me. I mean, when I say borderline, I mean borderline. Though. If I'm going to have four or five guys in S tier, is he one of those top four or five guys? That is really, really debatable. I think the answer is probably yes. So I'm going to put him S tier for now, but I might wind up moving him down. He's right again, like I said, on that borderline but he's a six seven shooting guard who's got a nice smooth release super athletic versatile defender can put the ball on the floor decently well i think he's s tier as well now definitely s tier is austin reeves and yes i know three of the first four cards on this list have been s tier um so i guess we're doing the s tiers early but they all their names all start with a so they come early in the list that's just how it works um Reeves is the best shot creating point guard in the game pretty much to me except for maybe Cade Cunningham um his fade is absolutely phenomenal he is a elite level release as well d-book dribble style great fade Kobe escape just really good sigs all the way around great shot creator really really a big fan of what he can do at the point guard spot I like this Leitner card a lot he's new he came out uh, a couple days ago as y'all seeing this video but I think uh from co-op this Leitner he's 6'11 really complete stat and badge wise 88 speed versatile badges can defend on the interior to pretty high level solid shooter Hoff blow by a big driver pretty complete gold playmaking badges even nice smooth release on very quick like card is really really solid even has hard behind the back at steph curry's drag back you could definitely argue him as an s tier guy i think he's definitely top a at least though really really solid danny grange is pretty mid he, he's got to go c and I, I gotta put a couple guys lower on the list i just have to it's how these lists are you gotta have a couple guys in the lower end of the list danny grange is one of those guys a uh shooting small forward who doesn't have that great of a release pretty mediocre defensively not super athletic and also doesn't dribble all that well honestly in my mind there's not that much that he does very well uh i'm just not that big of a fan of the card he's 6'9 i guess he's big and he's not horrible he's not a liability in any specific area but he's not a great card in any area either so i think c tier is pretty fair i'm going b for wigs or sorry a for or a for rodman i should say um six seven small forward but with a seven three wingspan big player build really really dominant defender obviously it's for dennis freaking rodman of course he's a dominant defender but he's got literally every single defensive hall of fame badge in the game which does certainly help to make him an absolutely impe impeccable defender. Uh, really, really good card who can finish at a high level as well, like really high level. And honestly, dribbles pretty well. Kyrie dribble style Jamal Murray behind the back. His release isn't the best, but it is on very quick. I like the card. I think he's very, very solid. And I think A tier is entirely fair. Um, Grant Hale, I'm going to go A tier for S tier for him. He's better than Wiggins. I, I'm going to have to move Wiggins down, aren't I? I don't yet. I might wind up moving Wiggins down. I think Grant Hill, I understand that he isn't quite in the same tier as most of these guys when it comes to gambling only or non-gambling cards, but he is a non-gambling card. You don't have to gamble to get him. Now, with that being said, if you have Grant Hill, odds are you've probably spent a lot of money, so I do understand people's kind of annoyance with me putting him on the list, but he would be considered a non-gambling Opal, and I'm trying to rank every Opal, so I'm splitting them up between gambling and non-gambling, and uh, this is how I've done it. So, Grant Hill's on this list, and he's an S your guy six eight great all-around card does a ton of things well really really good harden is b tier 
I, I just don't love Harden. I don't. He's not as good defensively as a guy like Reese, in my mind. Um, and shot creation wise, I don't, I don't think he's quite as good either. I understand his release is really good. His six are fun. He's dunks the ball well. He's a really good card. I understand that. Maybe I'm a little low, but I just I still have other good cards to get to on this list as well. I'm looking at this list, and there's three or four more guys at least that I think are really really good cards. So like James Worthy, for example, he has to go at least A, if not S. He's six nine, really versatile defensive small forward with a great release. Who's got half limitless, shoots the ball at high level, and super athletic. He fits a ton of teams phenomenally well, and he can compete against the best of the best best cards at his position that's not as much i mean it's true about harden as well but i don't know i just think it's more fair to put him a little lower on the list because of his defensive deficiencies same thing with a guy like john havlicek elite level sigs and animations great release dribbles at a super high level as well but also a great defender a bunch of half defensive bad is high mid to high 90s and a lot of defensive stats that's just better than a guy like james harden and to me that's it's got to be rewarded with a higher spot on the list um Kevin Love is going to join Harden in B tier. He's, he's, Kevin Love's only 6'8", so he's kind of small, but his animations are really nice. Release is absolute butter. Fade is also really, really good. Um, and he honestly is very complete. Young K Love with a lot of versatile badges on the card as well. So we're going to go B tier for him. Chris Middleton's release is not that great, and neither are his sigs. Really, the one thing the card does have going for him is the Trey Fade. He's got pretty decent defensive badges, but he's nothing special at all. I think putting him C tier is entirely fair. I also think putting this Braun card in B tier is totally fair as much as people love this card his animations are not that great obviously i'm just talking sigs specifically like dribble sigs release on normal he's an insane slasher and lebron always gets elite defensive animations as well outperforms the stats and badges animation wise a lot and honestly this card is not insane stat and badge wise but he plays better than the stats and badges say um opal lebron man he's a dog he's still got aura in a lot of ways but i still think b tier is fair Manu's going to be our first D tier. He's undersized, doesn't have a great release, not super athletic. That's not really what you're looking for out of a shooting guard. He is definitely the first D tier and maybe the only, well, no, there's probably going to be one of the D tier, but he's not as good. I don't love this MPJ card either. Uh, I think, honestly, I kind of want to put him C tier too, just because his release is great, but that's kind of all he does is shoot the ball. He does almost nothing else at a really high level. Really, I don't think he does anything else at a truly super high level, but he is an elite level shooter, so that does provide some value, but at the same time, I don't know. Um, yeah, I guess the last card is Mitch Richmond, who is a D tier. Um, not a bad card, but I also wouldn't say he's like unbelievably great or anything. I uh, know he's not D tier. What am I saying? He's probably, C is he C or B? He's six, five at point guard, but he doesn't have great sigs. Defensively, he's pretty good. He's not an unbelievable slasher though, if I remember correctly as well. Let's just, let's see what his slashing badges look like. He has no posterizer on Hoff. Yeah, no posterizer precision dunker on Hoff. Not ideal. Defensively, he's also not that great. No immovable. Doesn't come with anchor or brick wall on the base card either. Yeah, I think C tier is probably fair for him. Not that great. Moses is a card that I really like. I almost want to put him S tier, but I don't think I can. I almost think that Leitner card looks better than him. As crazy as that is to say, Leit I think I'm moving Leitner to S tier. This Leitner is so tough looking. I, honestly, he looks phenomenal on paper. I'm intrigued by that card. I'm going to, have to do gameplay with him very soon. Uh, I record As I say this, I have a recorded gameplay. I might wind up having recorded gameplay and releasing it um, today as well on Easter as you are seeing this video. Potentially, I don't know. We'll see. I'm hoping to get a gameplay with him pretty soon, but I think he actually deserves it. I think he's better than Moses because here's the thing. Moses doesn't have the release nor the shooting ability that Leitner does, at least as a base card. If you badge Moses out, he's an insane card, especially because he is phenomenal defensively, super fast, versatile, really good card, but I think A tier is fair for now. 6-4 PG, but he does have a movable enforcer. I do like Sidney Moncrief, but he's also also not that great of a shooter that's kind of the flaw with that card he's not bad at all but i think b tier is fair tyrus max is only 6'2 i just i have to put him b tier he's so small his release also isn't that great i, I like the card he's fun to use but on the list this it, these strict this strict it's tough man i'm going um zach randolph and c tier release is really bad but I, I mean no the release is actually terrible i'm putting him d tier he's actually a really good card but his release is awful Go watch the gameplay that I did on this Zach Randolph from last week and go watch that gameplay for like a minute and a half and you will see exactly why he is not very good. I think he's D tier because his release is horrible. If he had a good release, he'd be like A tier. He's really good in a lot of areas, but his release is atrocious. Then you got Zion, also not a very good release, by the way, but uh, Trey Fade and I do actually think he's a little better than a guy like Zach Randolph, in my opinion. I don't know. I like the card a lot. I think he's really good. Um... 
and I think it's probably pretty fair to put him in the C tier. I, I think he's honestly, because of the trade fate, a little better than Zach Randolph as well. So overall, that is going to do it for today's video. So I hope y'all did enjoy the video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment and subscribe. Let me know what y'all think of my tier list in the comment section down below, and I'll be back with more 2K content very, very soon. I appreciate y'all. Peace.